Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Looks like we're gonna have a nice, beautiful, rainy day. I'm just waiting for the rain to come down. Uh, got something a little bit different today, a repair, uh, actually a fabrication. So let's go downstairs and get it now started. Basically, a, a lathe is nothing more than a glorified drill press on its side. It's all it is. It's a um, machine that can turn something horizontally. There are two types of lathes. The one you're looking at now is a wood lathe. And how a wood lathe works, it has a tail stock, <clears throat> excuse me, a head stock, and a tool rest. And you take your tool and you position it on the tool rest, feed it into the work, and that's how you make cuts on a wood lathe. And there are many different types. They run into the many thousands of dollars. And the second type of lathe is a metal lathe. Now, a metal lathe is just like uh, the wood lathe. It turns material on its side. The difference is that it still has a tail stock and a head stock, uh, but the difference is instead of feeding the tool in and holding it on a tool rest, it's done using these knobs that just feed the, the cutter into the work. And it's uh, much more rigid, and that's what makes uh, these able to cut metal where the other one is made to cut wood. Now, one of the subscribers to the channel, by a, a gentleman by the name of Daniel, has a a nice general 260 wood lathe and he uh, unfortunately there's a pin that engages and disengages one of the features of the lathe and it and you could see it broke see how that's broken and there's a ball detent you know there's a little ball bearing that um, when this is together you could see there's a an area that catches the ball or whatever so he broke this pin and he said he can't find it if you wonder if I could uh, fabricate one up and now uh, he just wants something to get the thing working again and whatnot. But normally, if you had like a full size, a big lathe, you would take a large piece of uh, steel stock like this and you would, you know, fabricate the piece out of something like this. Uh, there's a bunch of different steps. We'll go through them. The problem is that with a small mini lathe like I have, especially working on steel, it's taking uh, metal off of uh, a big rod like that is, is pretty difficult. So what you always do when you have a mini lathe is you try and start with something that is as close to the finished product as you can. And you can see here, we're gonna start with this bolt. And the reason is because that, that's so much less material I have to take off. So we're gonna try and fabricate this out of this. Now the first thing we wanna do is round off this section here to make it look like this. Now. Uh, we're dealing with a hexagon head here. Now, when the tool is in the tool post and this hexagon head is spinning, it's going to be like a hammer, hammering down on that point. And the last thing you want to do is put undue stress onto your tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and round this off a little bit with a file, take off some of these uh, facets and make it somewhat round manually before we get it into the machine. It'll just make it that much easier on the tooling. Okay, as you can see, less than five minutes on the uh, with filing, and then we took it to the belt sander real quick. And you see how close we are. That's what you want to do. This is it. The closer you get to starting with this, the easier it is on your machines. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get it down to size, and then we're going to face it off. And then once we face it off, we're going to drill a little bit of a pilot hole into the center of the bolt. Okay, what we did here is, you can see, we cut it down to approximate size. It don't have to be exact, but you can see we have uh, the approximate size here. And now we cut a little, put a little dimple in the middle there. And the reason we did that is because we're going to have to support it. Again, I don't have a huge lathe and we don't want this to move at all. So I'm going to, by putting that little uh, bit of a hole there, I'm going to support it with the tail stock. So when I cut it down to size, it'll be much more rigid and uh, that much more accurate. Okay, well the first thing we're going to do is knurl it, and uh, knurling requires a lot of force. Again, that's why we needed that third, uh, that tailstock attachment. And now we're going to chamfer both sides of the bolt so that it doesn't uh, hurt your hands. You know, that's always nice. Touch it with a file right there. Now we're just going to get it down to size. And what I like to do is start with a small area and work my way up and down the bolt and uh, then finish it off with just uh, getting towards the shoulder of the bolt and then the threads and now we have it down to the right size and now we're going to cut that little groove in there that you need to uh, have the ball detent in and then uh, we're going to cut the uh, tip and to do that we were using the parting tool back and forth that's the way I got that down to size 
Well, we are pretty much close to finished on this one and you could see the uh, they match up. The problem we're having is, uh, I thought this was pretty cool, that's why I left it like this to show you uh, how the, the bolt is still on there. Now, there's a little rings on where the threads were. Uh, I wish I had more shank on that bolt, but uh, that's no problem. Usually the pins, they just uh, fit into a, uh, a casing. It's just this top pin here that really matters. And uh, so here's the one dilemma we have. And that is, you see this here? We got to drill out this hole here, but um, it's not exactly centered. It looks like it's off to one side. You see that? It's off to the left side, holding it this way. And... Uh, to the right side you know when I turn around but you can see that it's not centered so I don't know what the heck is that it even looks like it you know if it goes in straight this way like that it, it's on one side now I don't know about that you know that's the only thing I'm not sure of uh, you know but I guess if that's the way it came from the factory there's a reason for it so we'll try and duplicate that okay this is called a v-block and basically a v-block is nothing more than a jig that helps you to position items like here we're going to put this we're using the short you see there's a deeper v and the sh more shallow v we're going to use this more shallow one because uh you can see how that fits nicely and then you slip this over here uh you have to take back the threads here and then you'll slip it over there's uh two little grooves on the side of the block and then you slide down here and that'll hold the part in there nice and firm so that when you're drilling it won't spin, it won't twist, and it'll, it'll give it a good solid way to drill in. Now, the funny thing is I have all these uh, tools meant so that I don't drill off center. And now, figures, I get a part that's supposed to be drilled off center, which is actually harder <laughs> than drilling through the center. Now, the nice part about having a part to work from is you can just use it. You don't have to do any measurements in here. You can see I made a mark, that black mark I made right where I want to put the uh, the drill and I'm going to use a center drill. And you see the, how that lines up like that? So uh, that's the beauty of having a part to work from. And then we'll take the center drill you could see here and uh, come right down on that mark. Now you can see what I mean by being off center. It looks like they almost tried to bypass or it could have been a mistake at the factory. I don't know, but I have to duplicate that. So I'm going to try and get that just to the right of that mark and you see the way we have it set up into I'm using my center drill to start it because when you're on a surface if I use a regular one it'll skate off so I'm just to the right of that double checking that I'm on the mark I am on the mark and we're going to drill into it Okay, so you can see where we are. Now, onto here, we're just to the right of that center. So when we come down, it should be on the right as we are. But we made that to start the drill bit. Now we can position, now that we have that little hole there, we can position this any way we want to get that hole exactly where we want to go through. And we are calling this project finished. Uh, part came out pretty nice and I can't get the neurals as deep as they do with the larger machines but it will work and hopefully uh, everything will work out the cotter pin fits in the hole like it should and the hole is uh, is a little bit off center there as you could see uh, let's see if we can see through it there we go see how it's a little bit off center there that's just like the original so I hope that's the way he wants it all right, Daniel, I hope you enjoy the part. Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I know it's a little bit different, but something to look at. All right, take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.